Okay. Uh, welcome to Steps to Success, our second webinar. This one is going to be on social media best practices. The sponsor for this webinar is Laytronics. Nick Crandall from Laytronics is going to give a few remarks, and then we'll hand it over to our digital media specialist, Kayvon Saratkapur, for his presentation. Nick, go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Mary. I appreciate you guys giving me uh, the opportunity to be part of the WCM. As always, it's been great to work with all you guys and be a part of this, organ this great organization. Um, what I just kind of wanted to hit on was a few things about Latronics and things, some things you may be aware of, some things you may uh, not be aware of. And it's kind of great we can tie into some of the uh, social media aspects and things. Uh, just so you know, Latronics has been around for over 35 years and we feature a wide range of products in our video servers for channel broadcasts, our streaming products that allow you to do uh, both 24-7 live streaming and video on demand as well. Uh, some of the things we kind of uh, interface and integrate with our products is uh, with uh, the Twitter integration where you can actually pull your own Twitter feeds into your uh, content to display updates, announcements, things like that to kind of interact and be able to show people events and things that are happening throughout your city and uh, station and everything like that. Uh, one of the newer things we came out with last year was our Zoom integration, allowing customers to be able to integrate their Zoom meetings live on their existing Vibit accounts to be able to have the Zoom meetings live streamed, as well as their local access content. Uh, channel branding is really important to people nowadays. So allowing you to incorporate and in say your, your, your station ID logos, your lower third overlays, uh, the ability to actually brand through Twitter and stuff like that in different zones on your screen to kind of more personalize your content. And then of course, streaming is super important nowadays with being able to, with cable channels being more and more difficult on the local access stations as everyone is aware of our 24 seven live and video on demand streaming, allowing you to get your message up in high definition online while many are still restricted to the standard deaf world on your cable channels. Um, another big thing that many are unaware of now is we also do integrate with Roku as well allowing you to have your anything you're live or VOD streaming on your Vivid account, allowing that to uh, be enabled on your own personal Roku channel that we can create for you uh, to get your content out through Roku as well. Uh, one other thing I kind of wanted to piggyback is while many of you are familiar with our cable broadcast and streaming capabilities, uh, we also do feature, I, uh, feature IPTV solutions. Um, this is something we've been doing for over a decade and we incorporate into the municipal, municipal buildings as well as hospitals, corporate facilities and other locations. Kind of some of the things we do is digital signage, emergency messaging, live or on demand events, just a few of the things we can, that can be sent through your network uh, to different locations around your city without necessarily having to be on a dedicated cable channel. And um, that was kind of what I had for you today, just kind of a brief overview. If anyone has questions about any of our products, features, functionality, uh, feel free to always shoot me an email, give us a call. We'll be more than happy to assist with any of that. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you. Okay, hey, we're gonna turn it over to Kayvon now. Great, well, I will get started. Hopefully I can get go through this. So. Today, like Mary said, we'll be kind of going over social media best practices. I will begin with how to tell your story, discovering who your audience is, finding the right platform for your audience, and how to gain a, a better following on social media. As we all know, social media is everywhere and it's unavoidable. Um, I liked this quote, being yourself is the only way how to stand out in today's crowded market. So what's your story? So we're all, we are all storytellers um, and social media has really given everyone a platform to share their story and their voice. So it's definitely a crowded space and it's one that has many options and many audiences. So trying to find your place among millions and billions of viewers isn't always easy. Um, it's given us ways to share information. <clears throat> and it's, like I said, it's given pe 
people's ability to share stories that aren't often told. So how do you do that with maybe six minutes, 60 seconds, or just six seconds? You want to make sure that you are creating a response. So not just posting things without giving people the opportunity to respond. You also want to make sure to kind of set yourself apart from everyone else by looking at your competition and see what they're doing and seeing what you can do to make your story more unique. <clears throat> Evoking an emotion is another great way to um, get engagement, um, as well as creating a call to action. So you don't want to just post content without giving people a reason to, um, to react. And you want to make sure that your content is exciting to make them want more, to make them want to come back. I found this nice diagram that, about the Gary V content model. Um, it showcases how to best approach the beast that is social media and making sure your content is relevant based on the platforms you're using to reach your audience. So as you can kind of see in this diagram, the top of the pillar or the pyramid is documenting your content. So we're really using um, a form of journaling. Um, so you really are trying to get all of your information out, um, whether that's a blog or a podcast or a radio show, but then you want to look at it in the scope of social media, which kind of uh, funnels down to bite-sized pieces of information. So whether that is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, um, your content needs to be able to be uh, consumed within the small range of time that people are using these different websites. Another quote, social media successful. Uh, formula is content plus engagement plus con conversion, rinse, repeat by Mari Smith, uh, a Facebook marketing expert and social media influencer, speaker, and author. Uh -huh. I apologize if there's meowing. <laughs> there, I do have a cat and <laughs> she might interrupt. <laughs> so, discovering who your audience is. Who are they? Where are they most active and how do you find them? These questions can't always be answered right away, and it takes time and research to figure out where your audience spends their time, what content they are valuing, and what platforms they're using. So whether you're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, there's lots of different ways to figure out who's viewing your content, who's liking it, who's engaging, sharing, reposting, things like that. So as you know, it, it's not always, there's one method, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and experimentation is key. So figuring out what works, what doesn't work by trying different methods, whether that's posting videos, posting images, doing polls or things like that. Um, there's lots of different ways to engage uh, your audience. Looking back, um, a lot of people probably already have some sort of social media presence and seeing which of your posts were most successful. A lot of websites like Facebook and Instagram have insights or analytics that will break down for you. Who's looking at your content, when, where, um, and how long. So there's lots of different ways to figure out who, who is looking at your content and who that audience is. Also trying different platforms, just because there are uh, such a variety of platforms with different uh, objectives. You don't always have to be successful at using all of them. Uh, as we always say, quality over quantity is important. So if you find one that is working for you, you don't necessarily have to be on all of them at once because then you're wearing yourself a little thin and you don't want to do that if you're already successful just using one of the pref uh, preferred platforms. So what to ask uh, yourself when deciding who your audience is. Uh, who do you want to see your content and who will best engage with your organization's mission? What are the backgrounds, demographics, and geographic profiles of your target customers? 
What are their interests, online preferences, and whose content is exciting them the most? These are all things to consider when you're trying to discover who your audience is. And again, uh, like I said in the beginning, if there's any questions, please feel free to stop me and ask. I'm more than happy to answer or clarify anything. <clears throat> so a great way of figuring out who your audience is, is to create a persona. Uh, they'll help you develop who your target audience is, who you want to be viewing your content and who you want to uh, be engaging with on social media. Um, things to consider when you're creating these personas is the age, the gender, the location, uh, income spending, kind of any sort of pains, frustrations, personality traits, I'm so sorry, <laughs> uh, brands, organizations that they already support, their interests, how they spend their free time, where they hang out on the internet, and things like that. If you look at the example on the right, you see uh, their background. Andy is a young, motivated individual who wants to lead positive change in the world. He's frustrated with the system and wants to take action into his own hands, even though he may not know where to start. Some of his goals is he wants to make a positive difference in the world and looking to connect with like-minded individuals. Challenges is he has trouble getting organized and doesn't know who to contact to elicit change how you could help him provide a platform where Andy can create a group and easily assign tasks such as signing petitions, connect with people on in social interests and building community, displaying local and state po political officials based on their location. Uh, he's really passionate about um, causes and networking. He's tech savvy. He plays video apps or plays app games and he's eager to learn about politics. So these kind of just break down uh, just a general person who is engaging with that content. So maybe he follows uh, different news organizations on Facebook or Twitter and that's how he is engaging on social media. He's in the age range of 18 to 35. Um, He's a leader, he's outgoing, so he's definitely on social media. Um, once you kind of discover who that is, you can, which will go over each platform in a little bit, um, you'll be able to kind of do your research and figure out who is engaging with that content based on their age, based on their goals and things like that. So once you've developed these personas, you know who's engaging with what content where. The way to treat your users or customers and how you personally present yourself through social media is a way to differentiate yourself from your competitors. That's a quote from Alexis Ohanian, Reddit co-founder. So finding the right platform. Once you've discovered who your audience is and the different personas that fit your mission, now is the time to find the right social media platform or platforms. Like I said, it isn't necessary to be on all of them, and ask yourself, why are you on social media? And what do you hope to achieve by being on social media? So some demographics to consider when you're on Facebook. 72.8% are within the 18 to 44 year old range. Some breakdowns of other adults that are using Facebook, 64% of 12 to 34 year olds are on Facebook, 74% of 35 to 50 year olds, and 52% of 55 and over. 32% of those aged 12 to 34 identified Facebook as the social media platform that they use most often. It's a drop uh, actually over the past uh, few years where the top usage was at 58%. <clears throat> Seniors are the smallest population, but they are also the fastest growing population. So that's something to consider when you're using Facebook. If you have an older audience, then Facebook might be the platform that you want to use. Approximately 66% of US adults in rural regions use Facebook. So that's how they're getting their information, um, which I thought was an interesting fact. I know Wisconsin, we both have 
smaller communities and some larger metropolitan areas. So it's important to think about where your users are, where your audience is, and how they're getting their information. They may not be on Instagram or Twitter, but the majority of them might be on Facebook. So that's another thing to consider when you're trying to figure out which platform is right for you. Some statistics to consider. 15% of all Facebook content is video. So video is definitely key. It, it gets a lot of engagement. Um, so engagement, in case people are wondering, um, that's likes, shares, comments, um, reshares, things like that. Um, so that's kind of the broad scope of the word engagement whenever you hear that used when it's related to social media. <laughs> Shorter posts, um, so 120 characters, had higher click-through rates than longer posts. <clears throat> um, but longer posts, posts did have um, more engagement in terms of other clicks, or when it, the post is long, sometimes it says see more. Um, that's something to consider too. Uh, if you are sharing a story or something that's related to the content that you want people to see, sometimes a longer post might uh, get people's attention. They kind of wanna, wanna know what that see more or, or click um, other does. They, they kind of are excited about what you're, you're sharing. Facebook ranks higher um, live videos higher in their newsfeed when they are live after uh, than after the event ends. So if you're doing a Facebook Live um, during an event or uh, a presentation, it'll show up higher in the news feed um, than after you uh, close that out. Um, obviously, if you look at the, the platform of Facebook, you have the stories, then your general news feed, um, as well as uh, posting that content. Um, so you kind of get an idea of where people will look when they first go to Facebook. They're probably seeing the stories first and then their general news feed. Um, Facebook users are spending roughly 34 minutes per day on the platform. Um, the average engagement rate for a Facebook video post is about 0.26%, uh, whereas overall engagement on posts on Facebook is about 0.18%. So, like I said, video is kind of key on Facebook. Although that percentage is really low, um, it, it still has an impact um, of when people are engaging with your, your content. 36% uh, of people get their news on Facebook, which is more than any other site. So YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, things like that. So it's it's one of the highest places where people are getting their news content. So that is definitely something to consider when a lot of, I assume, people in attendance are sharing news related to their communities. And Facebook behavior really revealed the best time to post is around noon, um, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. People are kind of on their lunch break and might be perusing what's on their feed at that time. So that's kind of a good time to consider posting. There are lots of other ways to um, look at the Google uh, Analytics and insights to see when your users are, are most frequently on your page. Unfortunately, today, <laughs> people are on Facebook all the time. So your numbers or the times that it's telling you to post might be kind of a broad range of most of the day. Um, so it's really, like I, we said, when you're discovering your audience, it's kind of trial and error and experimentation. You really have to make sure that, that you're figuring out when your audience seems to be engaging with you the most. Uh, next, I will talk about Instagram. Instagram, obviously, is a highly visual platform. Uh, 25 to 34 year olds represent the largest audience on Instagram, followed closely by 18 to 24 year olds. So obviously that skews younger. So if you're looking for a younger audience, Instagram is definitely the place to go. Um, as you can see, people who are accessing Instagram usually are going on there frequently, more than once or twice per day. Um, 
as you can see, both the those two first two age groups are on there, 60 to 67 percent, whereas 35 to 54 are kind of in that 40 to 45 um, percent range, and then 55 plus are on there a little bit less. Um, the majority of users uh, in the U.S that are on Instagram live in urban areas, followed by suburban and then rural. Like I was saying with Facebook, a lot of rural users are on Facebook versus Instagram. So again, depends on where you live, what um, audience you're trying to, to reach and what demographic. Um, so it's important to know where your users are and what platforms are on. Uh, approximately 72% of teenagers in the United States use Instagram. So that's a big number. So if you're trying to spur action with a younger audience, Instagram is definitely one of those platforms. I didn't talk about TikTok today just because that one's a whole nother beast that I myself am still not um, very fluent in, but that is definitely one of the growing platforms for, for that younger teenage audience. Again, some statistics to consider use, uh, to consider when you're using Instagram is that on average, uh, each user will spend about 30 minutes. 11% uh, of those people are using Instagram as a news source. So Facebook was around 36% of Instagram is around 11%. So people are using Instagram to get their news, but not as much as some of the other platforms. There's around 500 million people using Instagram stories every day. Again, Facebook and Instagram, obviously, they're owned by the same company. So their setup is very similar where the stories or the live um, video casts are kind of at the top of the page and then the feed and um, regular posts are down in their uh, feeds. So <clears throat> If you're trying to get their attention right away, stories is another way where they will see that content first versus maybe a post. If they're following lots of different users, they may not always see your post. And Instagram and Facebook both see different algorithms to kind of show you content in oh, different ways. 63% of Instagram users check the app at least once per day and 42% open that multiple times a day. So if you're posting on Instagram, you might want to consider posting multiple times. Um, if your users are on dur during different times of, of the day, it might be a good um, idea to post when they're most active. Um, breaking down what type of posts work best, it seems that Using carousel posts, so that's where you're posting multiple photos or videos in one post, seem to get the highest engagement, followed by images and then videos. Instagram users <clears throat> engage more on weekdays, so Wednesday, Thursday are kind of the most uh, active days where people are getting their content or logging in. And Instagram videos get over two, mi uh, two times more engagement than photos. So. Across a lot of platforms, video is definitely the way to go. Um, and making sure that video is in, embedded into their platforms so that users aren't having to take that extra step to, to go uh, to another platform like YouTube or um, Vimeo or, or other uh, video platforms like that. And they definitely, within their algorithms, try to make sure that you stay on their page and that you're staying engaged. Uh, in their uh, platforms. Twitter, um, again, the age is typically um, skews towards the younger side, 25 to 34 are the largest demographic on Twitter at 28%. About 20% of adults use Twitter in the US. Twitter demographics show that in the U.S. 50%, 56% are males as opposed to 44% are females. So you have a larger male audience that's younger uh, that are using Twitter. And 30%, 32% of U.S. users have higher college degrees. Um, a little bit into the research that I did for today's presentation, it seems like 
Twitter is more of a political um, app where people are getting their news or um, other political content off of Twitter. Um, 80% of Twitter users are what you call affluent millennials. Um, and 42% of them are on the platform daily. So again, Twitter, not a whole lot of people, there's still a large number of users on Twitter, but it might not be the right platform for you just because there's a smaller number and people are getting there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> um, uh, where was I? <laughs> so it may not be the right platform for you unless you think that that's the audience that you want to reach with your content. Um, some statistics to consider, 17% of Americans get their news from Twitter. So more than Instagram, but still less than Facebook. Um, so if you're looking to share news or updates, Twitter is a, a, a great platform for using if you are wanting to share breaking news or things like that. I think that is a, a good way of, of using Twitter. Um, around 60% of users get their news regularly from Twitter. So 60% of those 17% uh, are using Twitter to get their news regularly. Um, Twitter has been a growing platform, especially during the pandemic, um, and video views have increased um, almost 62%. So people are spending more time watching videos and, and video content on Twitter. Um, tweets that are using hashtags get 100% more engagement, so making sure you're using trending or relevant hashtags. Um, uh, are a great way to make sure that you're getting more engagement. Um, and like I said, with the video, video gets about 10 times more engagement. Um, so really every platform video is kind of where most people are, are using and spending their time and willing to react and comment and share. The average time though on Twitter is about 3.9 minutes per session. So it's not a long time. So and since Twitter is kind of a in-time uh, feed, you have to post quickly, otherwise it's gone in a second. So it may not be the platform for you if you think your content wants to be viewed for a longer period of time versus in the moment. Bite-sized news in the form of tweets makes it easy for uh, quick consumption. So that's one thing to consider as well. So. Maybe if you need to share something in, uh, that is quick, um, it's a great way to use Twitter to make sure people are, are getting your content in time. Um, I believe, before I go on to that, one other platform which I didn't uh, have a slide about today, but one to consider is LinkedIn. It's becoming very similar to Facebook, where there's economic news and people are sharing content on uh, their personal LinkedIn. So that's another platform that you might want to consider looking into and doing some more research on in your, your free time. Social media is here. It's not going away. It's not a passing fad. So you want to make sure to be where your customers are, which is in social media. That's Lori Ruff. OK, hold on. So one way to help uh, grow your following is to use the popular method, if you haven't heard of it already, is SMART goals. It'll help you define how you want to grow on social media and hold you accountable to make sure that you are achieving those goals. So SMART is an acronym. It stands for specific, so making sure your goal is clear, simple, and defined. Then measurable, where are the analytic is where the analytics come in. You want a goal that has more than one metric. Achievable, is it achievable or is it not possible within your resources? Realistic, with your current resources of time and money, is it possible to achieve your goals? And then time sensitive. 
every goal is a time frame, needs a time frame, whether it's one year, seven months, one month, or even shorter. <laughs> so an example I have here on the right side is um, kind of increasing your brand awareness on Facebook. So their specific uh, goal is to increase brand awareness within a five mile radius of their cafe, in this case, a cafe, but it could be a, a media center or um, a restaurant or a, a city government building. Um, is it measurable? So increasing fan count by 15%. So that's increasing likes and clicks and, and things like that and having an average post reach about a thousand people. Is it achievable? Yes. Is it realistic? Boosting new cafe posts with advertising by using $15 per post, targeting an audience with a five mile radius. Consider also posting neighborhood specials to get the word out about the cafe. And then they're time sensitive. It is a three month limit on achieving their goal. Um, so other ways in which to grow your following, using hashtags. Hashtags are super important today in terms of social media. You wanna make sure you're keeping them general and relevant. Um, the more relatable they are, the more people will see them and discover your content. Um, a good way of uh, figuring out what's trend uh, is to look up what's trending or looking at your competition to see which hashtags they're using so that Whenever they see that hashtag and search for it, they'll see your content. Your audience needs to be able to see which content or which hashtags you're using. Um, you could create a event specific hashtag. So hashtag WCM Media Fest. Um, we did that this year with our content. Um, so that when anyone searches that content, they'll see everything that we've done. And it's another way of getting your audience to use that hashtag to share their content. And then that way they ha you have your content that your community has generated that you can reshare, which helps build that following when people feel that there is a, a dialogue happening. Making sure you're consistent. Um, making sure overall tone of your social media presence matches your personality, values, and voice, and the mission of your organization. So that means, you know, making sure if you're on multiple platforms that they all look and feel the same, that you're, you're making sure all of your content kind of seems like it's coming from one person, <laughs> per se, um, or one voice. Um, and keep putting that on a consistent schedule um, so that engaging with your community happens regularly. Automating um, is a great way to help with the stress of always having to post. Um, there's lots of different services out there like Hootsuite, Sprout Social. There's the Facebook Creator Studio that can help you plan out and schedule postings on a lot of their webs on a lot of these platforms. It'll help you build your media strategy and keep you organized. Actively engage. Engagement works both ways. Um, you can't just share content, but you also need to engage with those that are viewing your content. So you want to foster community. Um, it'll increase your presence as well, but it'll help you develop real life relationships with your audience. So you can't just post and expect your community to grow if you don't actually create the dialogue. Um, some different ways to do this are create a short 30 second, 60 second video sharing the history of your company or organization. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could just be shot with a phone or a camera if you have access to that. Um, adding video content to your Facebook marketing strategy is an effective way of increasing that those um, coveted engagement metrics, so that 0.26% um, versus the 0.18. Um, if you're on Twitter, tw uh, uh, photos get a lot more engagement. So making sure that you're posting images, people love visuals. So they want to see word, uh, 
it's the imagery that related to the not to the copy and content that you're sharing so multiple images is another great way to to, to tell that story curating user generated content by sharing stories from your community through photos on instagram or facebook or twitter is another great uh opportunity like i said when you start using hashtags that are recognizable you can search those hashtags and find content that your community is creating and reshare that with a wider audience and they can then take and share that content with you sharing with your audience uh, what successes and achievements you have is another great uh, way to uh, grow your following so they can see what you've done. They can aspire to be on that presence with you and to um, distribute your content within their own communities. So once you're sharing your successes, they'll wanna share how they used your inspiration to create their own successes. Um, more uh, examples are Facebook has a practice of de-emphasizing links and prefers their own native content as part of their algorithm, especially in the case of video. So links that could be to a website, that could be to YouTube, just they want you to stay on the platform. So they won't share that content as high up on your newsfeed as they would with other, um, with other content that is built into the platform. So making sure that all of your content is viewable within Facebook or within Instagram is important. If you've used Instagram as well, you know that you can't really post a, a link, an external link within your posts. It won't um, be clickable. Um, users can't also copy content out of their posts set from Instagram. They can only put a link in their bio. Um, so it's important to make sure that your content stays within their platform and that they're not leaving the, their platform to view other content. Facebook also noted that video content drives higher engagement and interactions from users compared to any other type of content on the platform. So like I've been saying, video is definitely the way to go. It's definitely uh, what people are viewing the most. And boosting, um, to Facebook and Instagram is important. Um, if you're trying to reach a wider audience that doesn't already like your page, um, it's a simple way to just spend a, just a little bit of money, it doesn't have to be too much, um, to reach a more targeted audience. Um, you, there usually is a, a, a spot on your page where it says to boost a certain post and then it'll ask you a, a list of different questions about your reach, how far of a uh, radius uh, with from your location that you want people to see this content and for how long and that will all kind of depend on how much money you're willing to spend to make sure that the people you want to see your content are seeing it. I think also some different resources like i said there's hootsuite which is a scheduling as well as sprout social canva has been a really big uh it's been growing a lot if it's for a lot of people that might not have a background in design or marketing and it helps them create templates and content uh with all of their different templates um i think they even have video now it's a it's a great resource to use if you might not know where to start and you want to kind of create some visual content to put on your different sites facebook business is also kind of revamping how to share uh content their creator studio helps users schedule and um post different things, post their content ahead of time so that you know maybe Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, I can schedule out my posts and then um, different things like that. So there's lots of different resources out there, free and low cost for you to use. Um, but yeah, I think that is all I have. So if there's any questions with the remaining time, I'm happy to go over specifics or if you want me to run through some of the different um, websites I can put uh, pull those up on my computer and we can take a look um, so yeah 
Thank you, Kayvon. Um, I did have a few questions. I put them in the chat bar. Um, I kind of had some uh, questions as we went along. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. It didn't, it didn't pop up for me. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. You see them? Okay. Yes. So, okay. Mary's first question is talking more about Instagram videos. Did you have something specific about Instagram videos or? Well, I guess one of the things I was curious about is, um, you know, when you say it has to originate from Instagram or Facebook for the, uh, for it to, uh, the algorithm to place it higher, mm -hmm. exactly what does that involve? Um, are you supposed to be using some kind of a feature in one of these apps to, to create a video or is it just that it doesn't come from YouTube or another app that, you know, exactly what do you mean by that specifically? Mm, sure. So for Instagram specifically, so there's, they've created several different ways in which to share video content. So you can obviously record a video with your phone or anything like that. So if you're kind of producing that video, you can post it to Instagram, whether I believe it's, they have a shorter time limit, but I think they've allowed kind of longer videos. Then they've created their, similar to Facebook Live, there's Instagram Live. So doing live video shoots for events or things like that is another way which you can do video. And now they have Reels, which is their way of competing with TikTok is creating, I believe it's six second videos or six to six to like 12, 20 second videos. Um, so it's really bite-sized infor information that you put on those. Um, that's another way. And then you have stories. Um, stories show up at the top of your Instagram feed. So that is kind of the hierarchy. So you see the stories first, which could be a way of sharing your video content, um, which your users will see right away versus if it's a post that you do on Instagram, they might not see it or they might not see it right away if they have to scroll through all of the different accounts that they're following. On Facebook, uh, like I said, they don't love that if you have to go to an external link. Um, so you might have to download that video from, from YouTube or from a different website. Um, and then post it uh, as a post. So the video is playable in Facebook because when it's not, that means that your user has to take that extra step to click to go to a different website and then play the content. So it's just their way of making sure people don't leave. <laughs> uh, they wanna close the door behind you so that you uh, sit down and spend as much time on their platform as possible. Okay, all right. Um, the next question Mary asks is, what's the difference between click-throughs and other clicks? I believe that is a click-through is kind of when you're clicking on an external link or um, you're clicking through the post. Other clicks, I believe, I'm not, I haven't seen that too much, but I think it's just where you're clicking on the page um, in terms of to get to the content, whether you have to go to a different Facebook group or somewhere else within their platform, I think would be considered an other click. Okay, does anybody else have any other questions? No. Um, wow, okay, I guess you were pretty thorough, Kayvon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like happy to go over any like if you want a specific example too, like whether it's related to your organization or, or anything like that. If anyone has any questions, I know there's a couple of us still here. <laughs> yes, TikTok is definitely sweeping social media. I think it's definitely taken some of the audience away from Instagram and Facebook. Um, but it, again, it's that small bite-sized information and people just wanna be able to quickly go through and see things. But I don't know if it's actually very 
efficient. Like I've seen some of those TikToks where they're trying to teach someone how to cook a souffle in 25, 30 seconds. And they kind of cut out a lot of, out a lot of the key information. So I think it's important to consider if you want to venture into TikTok to know that maybe you're not giving them as thorough of an explanation or storytelling as you could on maybe Facebook or Instagram or even Twitter. All right, well, um, seeing no other questions, um, I think we'll turn it back over to Nick. Nick, did you wanna make any parting comments? Uh, just that, yeah, once again, I appreciate uh, the webinar. It was absolutely great, great information. I learned quite a bit from it. And yeah, I'm just happy. To, we're just happy to be a part of the WCM. And if there's anything anybody needs, feel free to reach out to us. And we're always happy to help out and work with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, I appreciate the uh, uh, Kayvon taking the time to prepare this, this great presentation. I'm sorry we all uh, put ourselves in black for it. So. That's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about my cat too. She, oh, <laughs> she I wanted to make a few appearances. <laughs> I was starting to think that you were going to have to give her a real big slap there. Bob. I know. I was like, I kind of <laughs> had to push her off the table a little bit, but. <laughs> and then there was this constant thumping toward the end. What was she? Is that a toy of hers or something? I, I tried to close the door to close her out, but she oh. she still wanted to come in and. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. I know what you she mean. She's excited about social media. <laughs> we we once had a cat where we tried to close her into a bedroom, and she ended up literally clawing her way through the the carpeting, the foam oh, no. pad, and into the the actual floor. So there was no <laughs> shutting her out. Mm. Anyway. Uh, we digress. Um, so thank you very much, Kayvon, for doing this the, uh, webinar. And thank you, Nick uh, and Latronics for sponsoring this webinar. And thank you all of you for coming. And I hope this is a worthwhile webinar for all of you. Uh, take care. Yes. Mm -hmm.